store is getting or my second store rather is getting kind of busy so my my remote tech sitting next to me is like what should we do because we're getting to that point where i can't do everything i got gotcha. you so i thought okay let's get another remote tech in because that's really that can benefit all the other stores all right so you decide to get a remote tech in how do you um yep. how do you get them what do you do to get a, a good reliable employee oh i'm gonna probably start with the interns again but how are you gonna advertise it oh i've got there's like two schools in this town two network schools Oh, yeah? So I'm going to call them up and say I need an intern, and they send me a bunch of resumes. Yeah. Really? That's great. Yeah, I don't even – they send the, – the the network techs are great students because – this is kind of a, another tip for everybody because there's very few jobs out there. And a network tech that actually gets to intern at a real computer repair shop is so rare, you know? I mean, it's just not a, a big opportunity. A lot of repair shops don't consider bringing on interns. Right. So they don't get any live experience. You know, so you're saying it's and good for the resume for them. It's good for the resume. It's good for the learning. And I tell you, there's a lot of the the guys have one, you know, just one employer, just their own, you know, place. Having an intern is kind of good for for both people, I think, because you actually, I enjoy mentoring. You know, mm -hmm. so I enjoy telling someone and giving them a project and having them go at it and try to learn it. And, and that really makes them uh, excel real well, I think, because they're taking their their interest in computers and their knowledge from school. And they're bleeding it together. And then plus you're giving them hands on life experience and you tell stories and shoot the breeze. And, you know, there's always a lot. So there's it's really good for, I think, you to empower yourself as the owner to share your knowledge and for the student. And plus they. I don't know. They they usually just become like you give them enough work, then you want them there. Right. And they then you can pay them and you can go do other stuff. Right. Develop right. business, go to networking events or do whatever, you know. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And if somebody's so, interning, they they have the passion or they have some kind of want because they're not getting paid. So you know that they're not there just for the money or something like that or some other reason. So Well, they're hungry. They're hungry. Yeah. And plus I've created a um what's called intern academy. So all the interns have to follow the six rules of the academy um, guidelines, and that means they're going to learn about six different areas, um, like documentation, customer service, um, software, hardware, um, blogging, and um, something else. Really? Like that. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The intern academy. <laughs> <laughs> That's <they> awesome. Because <laughs> then if they pass, and that means they did their work. Yeah. And that means they have to earn it. Now, some of the network students have their own internship um, requirements from the school. And um, you have to, so you got to do both because they got to do mine and theirs. I see. Do, mm -hmm. do you give them like a little certificate when they pass A job. It? It's better. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I've had, uh, I think, 15 interns since 2007. And um, a lot of them have had uh, some short term jobs with me. And right now I have one, two, four that went from intern to a job. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, a great it's idea. Cool. Great way to do it. I do pay them now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. They earned that. Okay. You also have um, how your remote tools are equal to your, quote, shop bench. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like I was saying, my, my tech here is working on a bunch of stuff on the benches, and he does remote work. Because you know how, like, you um, – you know, you're doing a, a let's say a download of uh, some printer drivers. It's gonna take a while. They're big nowadays. So that time on a remote job, you know, you've got 20 minutes to go do something else. You can go to your bench room and do stuff. So it's kind of like a virtual bench. I see. You know, and one of my techs sometimes is in three or four computers at once. So for him, it's kind of like he's managing four shop bench or four bench computers. I see. Except they're all just in his own monitor. I see. So, and it sometimes takes a while for some of these repairs, sometimes it doesn't, but that's that's an idea for someone that wants to do remote support, especially if you have limited space. I mean, not everybody has enough room, and especially people like maybe in dorms or whatever, you know, that want to start businesses or, you know, really small apartments yeah, or whatever. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So just mul do multiple machines at once and actually, yeah. have, and actually have physical machines on, like, that you're working on as well or no? Yeah, well, my tech here, I mean, we, well, we in this shop, we've got, I think, eight computers on the bench mm -hmm. and our remotes that we do every day. Hmm. And yeah. that's just the way we have right now. Yeah, it's smart. So. It's smart. Mm -hmm. 
I, can I mean, not everything's remote, but I yeah. mean, if it's easier to do it like that, why would you want to go to someone's house and spend two hours fudging no, around with the printer? No, totally. In fact, that's one of the it's one of the things about a computer repair business. If you say you're not doing remote support at all, like I wasn't, um, one of the things that really gets you is if you have to sit around and wait for some for something to get done. I mean, it's just and you so know unproduct- it's take forever. <laughs> yeah, and you kind of you know, and it, you go get a little down tone on it. And you're like just sitting around waiting. So if you have other things to do or more jobs you can uh-huh. do at the same time, it definitely improves income, morale, and everything else. Well, I think the part that I used to not like at the home visits was, oh my gosh, I have to sit here for 30 minutes yeah. and on the clock, wait yeah. for this. Yeah, I remember. And that's what bothered me. So I'd end up having given them a discount on the bill because my guilt. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So I would be like, okay, it's supposed to be 250 and with that half hour off and you're – and here's my favorite is when you write the bill and then they pay and then they sit and have you talk for another half hour. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. oh, awesome. Just one more question, and you're like, "Oh man!" <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, this relieves all of that. And the thing is, is that I know some people are uncomfortable with the home visits anyway. Yeah. Well, if you're comfortable enough on the phone and can you set up your processes well enough to do good remote support, you know, then it, the people are comfortable doing it. Yeah. And and you're you're confident, and that's what part of the remote book goes through the second edition is more thorough introduction to um, a chapter and explains why you need to know one really well. So you have confidence and you're professional and you've got everything lined up kind of to, you know, to do it and not muffle around. And I mean, I did a lot of that, Steve, for a long time. I didn't know what I was doing. What going, you mean with your home visits? No, with remote support. Like it took me about a year to get my whole thing down. Yeah. To figure it all out, like the processes, bookings, and how much time things take, and what to expect, and how to deal with the blue screens of death, and how to deal with computers that don't come back up to life after you restart them. And, right. You know, it's a lot. And we cover all that in the book, too. Yeah. Let's, well, let's talk about the book now. For anybody okay. who doesn't know or doesn't have it, and we'll talk about it at the end, too. Um, it's Lisa's Guide to Remote Support. It's actually called that girl's guide. To, is it the Guide to Remote Support, right? Is that what I said? Is yep. Right? Okay. Um, and um, can we give them the Podnuts link, Lisa? Sure. Okay. If you go to podnuts.com slash call that girl, it'll take you right to the page. Um, Lisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's in the book and uh, what people can expect? Uh, um, you know what? The book was, uh, there's a second edition done, and I'll explain why. The first thing is, is that the first version I put out there was really just more, um, uh, didn't have a lot of um, introduction and, and why you need to do things. It was just kind of like a how-to sheet more. And it made sense, but once I started getting feedback from people that bought the first one, they were they were like, hey, you know what, can you put this in and can you do that? Yeah. And, and they asked me a lot of questions. For, what, nine months I kept all these questions, Steve. And I finally formulated all the answers and I got some good feedback from uh, from an editor that said, here's what you need to do to this book to make it even better, Sweet. is explain more. Huh. And I said, cool. I just didn't know that. I've never right. done a book like that, you know? Right, right. And so um, the second version is kind of, it's almost double in size, and uh, it really has more explanation for each chapter. And, you know, I'm hoping that when people buy it, they, you know, it's not a technical manual. It's not a tech book on how to do technical repairs. So that's, I don't want people to be misunderstood. It is more of a business manual on how to do it. But there's some technical tips in there. Sure. You know, like there's some in virus removals and there's some on blue screens of death and how to deal with the crashing. And But that's more like the setup of it, um, like how to set up your ticket system, how to do the interview process, how to take payments, how to give out special marketing deals. Because once you're in remote support, you can do tons of deals that you could never do in a shop. Really? I mean, you could, but it's just not cost effective. Hmm. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, we've got tons of them. This is the kind of information I think people need because most techs like who are listening to the show or want to get into remote support, they know how to do all the actual virus yeah. removal and techie stuff, but it's the, all the other stuff around that, setting up the business and all how to get a good, solid remote support system in place that they're lacking probably. So yeah. it's, a, it's a perfect thing for them. It is, and it's kind of like the um, like if you were to buy a book, How to Start a Computer Repair Business, you would hope that there would be an outline of everything. Yeah. Like, here's what insurance I need. Here's what I need there. Here's what I need to go do. 
Um, mine doesn't have check boxes, but if you read it starting at the top, we cover almost everything all the way through to the end. It includes the 22 point checklist we use for remote cleanings, includes our uh, express cleanings for virus removals. We kind of feel that, you know, with all the different types of malware and viruses out there that, you know, they did have a virus, but if it didn't take us long to do an assessment and figure it out, we do an express cleaning on those and people are way happier because their computers are way faster anyway. And um, we also talk about some upsell opportunities for remote. There's at least three good ones that we do, which is online backup. And that, I know we talked about this before, Steve, it's just an awesome upsell because you're in their computer remotely. You can set up Mosey or Carbonite or whatever you choose. Right. And uh, we also just recently started doing the antivirus protection plan. Sweet. Which is going well. Really? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. then I found out another big company started doing it after me. So I know that they copied. <laughs> Don't you love when that happens? And, and I know they did because I figured it out. Really? They're snooping on me. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, cool. Well, this seems kind of funny that before when you had a virus with their company and then you called them, they would say, oh, it's going to be 180 bucks to remove it. Now they let you buy their protection plan that covers virus removals for like $8. Really? Yeah. I was like, really? That's no, it's, it's, it's not right. Quite why? Because it's bucks? too low? I don't know. It's Norton. And they're the ones that are doing it. And I found out it just made me dislike them even more. Eight bucks for what? A year? Like to, to buy for their insurance plan that they cover virus removals. I was like, really? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. They charge you 180 just, what, last month? And now it's $8 for like an insurance plan? That's weird. Is it a month? I don't know. I have to look into it a little bit yeah. more. A client just told me about it yesterday. That's weird. I told her. I told her, well, if you want to spend two or three hours talking to someone in another country, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Because <That's, laughs> that's what you're going to get. And she was like, that's okay. I'll buy yours. Well, what, what's Works yours for... What's yours about? How does yours work? Um, ours came from a lot of our uh, virus removal history of, with our clients. You know, we've, you know, we've built up a clientele. And we kind of had some problems like when we would do a removal and then a few months later someone would call back and they had another one. Yeah. You know, it was usually not the same one, but they would be like, God, another 99 bucks. Exactly. So we came up with a plan that we sell them malware bytes, license pro. We um, send them a quarterly email update to remind them to keep the M in the corner. Like make sure you see your M <laughs> and to make sure that your scans are happening for the updates and the um, um, updates, updates and scans. Right. So make sure those two are happening. Then we also do a back end of Microsoft Security Essentials and uh, we send them quarterly emails to remind them. And then if they happen to call in with any viruses, there's no charge for to remove them. How much do you charge for that? Uh, $69.99. Covers for a year or? That is the first year. Second year is yeah. 39 Good. That's cool. Yeah. It's been working out, huh? It it has worked out. And you know what? The TeamSpeak guys I've been working with helped me kind of like when it first started, I got heat, you know, all oh, that. So this and that. And <laughs> finally, I said, you know what, guys? Love your opinion. We're going to come back with another plan. And the last plan, everybody was like, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think I did it the first time too cheap. And I right. said, you know, for life. And I mean, really nothing's for life. So we just call it... Uh, just, a, just the protection plan, and that's what it is. And uh, we did, ch you know, change it for that extra year fee um, because then someone can get out and go, maybe something else will be hot next year. Yeah. No, we can't obvious. help but, I mean, look at SpyBot. Exactly. You know, four or five years ago, that was like the hottest thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's not. <laughs> <laughs> now <know>. it's annoying. <laughs> it totally is. People still use it, believe it or not. They do, and that that thing keeps popping up. Allow, allow, allow. I'm like, oh, get rid of it already. Those That's are the people I mean. that still have AOL email addresses. That's all I have to say. They usually do, yeah. <laughs> um, they love it and protected now, in the book. Yeah. Now you've been talking about the team. Mentioned the team speak a couple times. We've been yeah. off the air for a while here. So if anybody had does not even know what we're talking about or wants to join in, there's there's a uh, 
There's what do you a, mean you're, we're off the air? Did we end the show? No, I mean, like, I I've, I took a month off from podcasting. I only did, like, two maybe with Eric and Tim. So it's been sporadic. So if, there's been a gap. So if any 